Welcome to this week's edition of ONW Now. I'm Tessa Hunt. And I'm Ben Whitney. We're getting you updated on everything that's been happening both in school and out of school this week. The Winter Olympics give people from all around the globe a chance to come together and compete for something they can cherish the forever. These Pyeongchang are some of the best things Winter we saw Olympics at the Pyeongyang Winter Games. Week. In the medal count, the United fantastic. States took fourth with 23 medals total, nine of them in gold. One of the biggest surprises of the games comes from the men's curling team, who won gold. Anyone can make it in the Olympics if a few unathletic men in their late 30s can. The United States has won curling gold. Another surprising event was figure skating, where a 15-year-old from Russia took the gold, and the U.S. didn't place. This was the first time since before World War II where the U.S. figure skaters did not place top six. Sophie Skozek, a sophomore here at Olathe Northwest, drew an electronic picture of one of the U.S. figure skaters, Karen Chin, who saw it and reposted it on her own Instagram. Great picture, Sophie. The women's gold medal matchup between the United States and Canada. The women's hockey team was able to redeem the U.S. on the ice, winning gold by beating Canada, something that hasn't been done in over 20 years. These were a few highlights from the Winter Olympics in 2018. The 2022 Winter Olympics will take place in Beijing, China. The rules for the net neutrality ban were posted on Thursday, February 22nd, allowing internet service providers, or ISPs, to make plans and keep them ready for action once the bill comes into effect on April 23rd, 2018. The removal of this bill would allow ISPs to require payments towards certain sites, provide their own content over others, and even block content from the public entirely. In response to this, 23 state attorneys are suing the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, in an attempt to preserve net neutrality. I favor a free and open internet, as I think most consumers do. My concern is with the particular regulations that the FCC adopted two years ago. Uh, they are what is called Title II regulations, that developed in the 1930s to regulate the Ma Bell telephone monopoly. Related to net neutrality, the FCC's chairman, Ajit Pai, is currently under investigation for his ties to Sinclair Broadcasting, a TV station dedicated to Republican propaganda and information. Lawmakers claim that he is pushing the repeal of net neutrality to benefit this station, providing $3.9 billion to the station. This would push the amount of homes the station is in, giving Pi and the FCC pristine media coverage. The Hollywood Scoop is a new segment here on ONW Now, where we talk about what is happening in pop culture. Let's send it to Sarah Miguel and Addison Smith for the premiere of our new segment. Welcome to the Hollywood Scoop. I'm Addison Smith. And I'm Sarah Miguel. Let's take a look at what people are raving about in Hollywood. Prepare your ears, Ravens. Yep, that happened. Last week, Fergie headed to the NBA All-Star Game to do a unique rendition of our national anthem. Many celebrities fought back laughs during the performance. Fergie responded to the criticism by saying she's a risk taker and she tried her best. I like the effort, Fergie, but I think Draymond Green represents all of America after hearing that one. It's official. A foot is breaking the internet. New mom Kylie Jenner took to Snapchat to share her newborn baby Stormy's foot. Kylie even goes to on to say that the baby has mommy's cute little toes. Mommy's cute little toes. Stormy is 25 days into her life and she is already breaking Instagram records that would make Kim cry. Black Panther was released into theaters across America two weeks ago and has already exceeded the high box office expectations. <laughs> Black Panther, alongside Jurassic World, is the second fastest box office climb. The movie raked in a whopping $108 million in the first weekend alone and has now accumulated $400 million. That's all the entertainment news we have for the first edition of The Hollywood Scoop. I'm Sarah Miguel. And I'm Addison Smith. We will see you in the next episode. We've got Game Day Northwest ready to catch you up on everything in Raven Sports. Take it away, guys. Hey Ravens, welcome to Sports for this week. I'm Yuji Torres alongside Nick Lopez. Our show is packed, so let's get right to it. The Lady Ravens basketball team faced off against Crosstown rival the Lathan North Eagles on Tuesday night. As McGinnis and Kaylee Kappelman get ready for tip, McGinnis wins it and gets two points for her team. Kappelman down low, gets the rebound and puts it back up for two. A kick out to Geldner and Geldner, well, she hits a three. Erica Bay wants to join the party too and she hits a three of her own. 
Gellner drives to the basket and finishes with the right hand. A good trap defense by Gellner with the tip and the steal by Curry. Curry drives to the basket. North couldn't contain that all night. Reber gets a going with a free throw to give the Northwest a 63-33 win. The ladies advance to the sub-state championship game on Friday night at 7. Come out and support the Lady Ravens against Shawnee Mission Northwest. The boys basketball team played Wednesday night against the Blue Valley West Jaguars. Jack Parks and Stanley get it going. Stanley wins a tip. Nothing happens as Parks comes down and hits a three. Big night for him as he added valuable minutes. As well, Luke Waters drives to the basket with time expiring, but decides to fade away and hits a jumper with the clock running out of time. Jackson Nicodemus gets a three of his own, giving the Ravens a big night as well to Luke Waters. Aaron Reynolds drives to the basket and uses that right hand for a floater. Big game by him tonight as well as he was one of the players of the game. A miss by Waters and a rebound and a kick out to Kyle Sheever. He's feeling a little Sheever fever as he gets a three of his own, shooting 50% from three on the night. Ravens win 48-37. Good job, boys. The boys also advance to the sub-state championship game. They play Saturday night at 6 against Olathe East. Rock Chalk Jack Hawk. Congratulations to senior Jack Parks for committing to play football at the University of Kansas. Adam Cook and myself touched down with Parks about the upcoming season. Senior tight end for the ONW football team, Jack Parks, recently made his decision to continue his football career in college, and it's a big one. At the beginning of the senior year, um, Coach Beatty texted me and called me, and he, uh, he let me know that if I wanted to go up and play at KU, I could. And um, I've always wanted to play at KU, so it was a pretty big deal for me. His recruitment at KU began shortly after his last season of high school football. Offer came about somewhere in December. I didn't publicize it though, because I knew that was where I was gonna go. So I just wanted to do it all in one thing. So, uh, and then I signed on, obviously signing day last Wednesday. Coach Chip Sherman here at Northwest played an instrumental role in Jack's recruitment process. Uh, he helped me a lot in, uh, he knew all the coaches up at up in Lawrence, Coach Weir, everyone up there, um, and basically he, he was an instrumental part in me um, knowing everything about KU and me wanting to commit there. Sherman is just one of the things Parks will miss most about his time at O&W. Just everything about Coach Sherman, him uh, teaching me how to work out, and how to how to play the game of football the right way, and um, he really taught me how to be a man more than a football player. We wish Jack lots of luck in his college football career. From Gator Northwest, this has been Adam Cook and Antti Torres. Now back to you guys. The Raven Bowlers had their regional meet at Olathe Lanes East on Monday. On the girls team, Malia Smotherman qualified for state as an individual to qualify for Northwest. On the boys team, Cameron Kotwitz won the overall regional as an individual leading the team to place third at regionals. The boys team also qualified for state. Congratulations to all Raven Bowlers on a great season and good luck at state. The Raven wrestling team traveled to Wichita, Kansas to compete in the 2018 Kesha 6A-5A state championship tournament. Olathe Northwest started off slow with not many victories in the first few rounds. The Ravens went up against their toughest competition of the year, scoring 57.5 points as a team. Congratulations to O&W wrestlers KV on Kalantari and Caden Howard for taking third and fourth place. Um, I was pretty proud of taking fourth at state as a sophomore, but I wish I could have done a little bit better, but it was still pretty cool with only one other own W kid placing and just kind of, I don't know, kind of almost like helping lead. and Finally winning that last match and um, taking out a guy that a lot of people had said was going to uh, kind of destroy me at regionals, um, the regional finals. But uh, taking him out and uh, ending my season like that really kind of solidified the fact that um, I'm a competitor. I like, to, I like to compete and that no one can stop you, you know. That's all for this week for sports. This has been Andrew Torres and Nick Lopez. Now back to this news. On February 16th, Raven Service Club partnered with Eagle Service Club in a contest to see which school could bring in the most deodorant or money to help contribute to the organization giving the basics. The Eagles won the spirit stick and the competition with 129 deodorants over Northwest 92. Nice try, Ravens, and we'll get them next year. The Raven dance team held a show to showcase some of their talent before they head to Orlando. Their family and friends came out to see them perform their best dances from the season. Showcasing these dances gives the Raven dance team one more chance to show their stuff before they take to the national stage. Good luck, dance team, as you guys aim for your ninth title. 
Before we go, a reminder that Project Grad will be selling donuts for $1 each on Friday. Bring your cash and head to either the front office or the event centers to purchase. That's all for us at the Raven Daily. For Tessa Hunt, this has been Ben Whitney, and don't forget to tune into the Raven Minute tomorrow. Have a great rest of your week, Ravens.